Hi, this is Cheryl from Sassy Cheryl Stamps. Today we're going to be coloring up this brand new image that's in my shop. It's called Ladybug Tails. I've printed the image on Strathmore Smooth Bristol Board Paper. It's available at any Hobby Lobby or Michael's store. I find it to do very well with Copics and the pencils. Uh, so first we're going to color the skin and we're going to be using Copic marker number E000, which is pale fruit pink. Remember when you're coloring the image that you only want to put one coat on this. If you put more than one coat, it is going to darken. And you don't want that because we're going to shade over it with the pencils. So I'm just outlining her face and turning my paper to get in the crevices. You want to be careful a lot of times, even with this good Bristol board paper, try not to go over the ink lines because this is a digital stamp it will smear from time to time. Occasionally I will spray my images with a fixative to keep that from happening. But most of the time when I color I'm very careful that I just don't go over any of the dark lines. So I'm leaving just a tiny bit of white around her eyes. I just love little Sally, she's so cute. So now we have her face colored and we're going to get the rest of her skin. And a lot of people use different colors for their uh, skin. Um, I prefer the E000. Sometimes I use the E0000. That's a lot lighter. But in this instance, I'm using the E000. So we're going to finish up her skin, coloring her legs. And you don't have to be precise as far as getting all um, the leg or, or the skin because we are going to go over it with the pencils. So first I'm going to use the darker color, the first dark color is Sanguine number 188 and it is a Faber-Castell pencil. Faber-Castell pencils to me, these are polychromos pencils and I have the entire set. They just seem to blend better together. Occasionally I will use Prismacolors, but most often I use Faber-Castell pencils. Now you can see that I'm not pushing very hard. I'm doing a light circular strokes, thinking about where the shading would be on her face. The sun is coming from the top right. So on the left side of her body, she would have more shading. And again, I'm not pushing hard. Keep thinking about where the shadows would be. This is always the fun part for me, bringing her to life, or any image. Get around her fingers. And some people have asked me about the um, sleeve that I have on my right hand. That is from, it's a smudge guard. Um, and I bought that online and I do have the link below in the description. So it's a really great tool to wear when you're coloring because you won't smear any of your pencils. And it's also great for brushing away any like little fibers or something like that. So I just keep turning and putting the shading in. And again, this is Sanguine, and I'm not sure on some of these pencils, the color names, if I'm pronouncing them correctly, but I have included the number so you will know what you're looking for. But this is Sanguine number 188. So after I have the initial dark shade in, I'm going to come in with my Burnt Ochre, and this again is a Faber-Castell pencil. And I'm lightly going to go over where I just colored. And again, it's light circular motions. You don't want to press too hard. Even with these uh, Faber-Castell pencils, you will get um, some shininess if you press too hard or have too sharp of a uh, point on your pencil. So I usually have a blunt tip when I'm coloring. Unless I'm adding detail, then you want it sharp. So I'm just going to go over that. And I'm blending a little bit as I put it on. Now we're going to put in her cheeks, and for that I'm using Medium Flesh number 131. Again, light circular strokes. You can 
add more later if you want. It's just easier to blend. So then I'm going to come in with light flesh number 132 and I'm lightly blending over those two colors, the burnt okra and the sanguine. And I'm coming out a little further on her face and I actually should have zoomed in here but I did not. There is color being added there. You can't see all of it. That's why I'm going to the middle of her face so that her face doesn't look flat. But I'm going to blend all those colors and I'm also going to blend a little bit on her cheeks. That tones it down a little bit and takes out some of the pencil lines. And you don't actually, sometimes when I'm coloring different things, I leave it with the strokes in there because I think it looks nice. It just depends on the look that you want. Now you're going to keep alternating these colors until you get the look that you want. I'm going back over with the Sanguine, number 188, and I'm giving her a little bit darker shading around her face and her ears, and I'll do it on her entire body as well. Again, not pressing too hard, but just adding a little more definition to it. And when you start re-adding the color, this is when you really start to see your image come to life. Most often I do start with the face because I just like to do it that way. It starts, you kind of start feeling the character or what you're coloring. And again, remember not to push too hard. It's just a light strokes, circular strokes of blending. And when you're coloring this on your own and you use the same colors that I'm using, you will see that color is being added here. And again, I apologize, I should have zoomed in. And there are several pencils that are equivalent to the Faber-Castell pencils with the Prismacolors. So you can kind of do trial and error if you don't have the Faber-Castell pencils. I just really like these. Hobby Lobby does have the uh, Faber-Castell pencils, but I don't believe that they are the Polychromo. So if you are interested in using these, you will probably have to order them online. And if I'm not mistaken, I've had these for several years now, and I've reordered them from Artorama, but I think I may have ordered this set from Dick Blick. I think that's the name of the art store. I don't do a lot of online shopping. So continue to add the color. And you can leave it lighter if you like. This is just how I prefer to do it. And if you color the image over and over again, that's how you're going to get um, your skills down, so to speak. And each time you color it, it is going to look different. But you learn from trial and error things that did work, things that didn't work. And that's the best way to do something, repetition. If you don't like something, recolor it, start over. I'm going to give her a little definition around her eyes. And again, you can't see it, but it is there. But just continue to blend. And again, not pushing too hard. So now once that I have that the way I want it, I'm going to go back in again with the Sanguine number 188 and go just a little bit darker. Now remember, this is all about personal preference. You don't have to go as dark as I did. This is just how I chose to do it. And again, we're thinking about the light source coming from the top right. Now you don't want to blend too much with all of, with the uh, colors. You, you want to just get, let me see how to explain this. You, you want to get the blending there as your base because at the end we're going to go over it with the white which will blend everything. So again I'm using the light flesh and just going back over it so you don't have any harsh really harsh lines. I'm going to give her cheeks a little bit more rosiness and it, I don't know if you can see from what I'm doing but I use a blunt tip on most of it, except for like the cheeks. I usually have, um, I usually do that blunt all the time. But when I'm coloring in or adding shading, you can see me turn my pencil. I go from the blunt edge to the sharp edge, depending on what I need to do. And 
And the buildup of color is the way I prefer to do this. I'm no expert by any means. If you can get the shading down perfectly the, in the first um, coat that you put on, I guess you should say, then you should leave it. But I just continually go over and slowly build it up. And if you get a little too much on there, these pencils are really great. Even with after you've blended them together, they will erase. Not completely, but I've colored some things and um, you get a little bit of a line or something somewhere by accident by turning your pencil, you know, the wrong way or it's too sharp. And it is fairly easy to get an eraser. And I use a small tipped eraser that you can take that off, erase it. So just keep alternating your colors. And when you're coloring, don't get lost in what you're doing as far as um, keep adding and adding. You want to stand back or sit back and kind of look at it, you know, turn your head, study it, see how it looks. So you just keep blending with the light flesh. She's really coming to life now. She kind of makes you want to smile. So now I'm going to come in with the white and I'm going to blend this all together. Now I'm not pushing really hard. You want to go light at first. If you need to blend out some of the lines, you can. But this just gives it that final touch. And kind of pulls it all together, so to speak. She's looking pretty good. How's yours look? <laughs> now, don't be, don't worry. I'm putting all of these pencils, uh, the names and stuff like that, in the description box, including the paper and things like that, so you can have them all lined up when you follow along. And it's great because you can stop when you want. Okay, now we're going to color her hair, and I'm going to use Copic marker. Y32, and that is cashmere. I also sometimes use E30, I believe it is, which is bisque. And that gives her kind of a light, light blonde hair. Almost like a dirty blonde. But I was just feeling a little bit bright this when I did this, and I used the Y32, the cashmere. It's a beautiful color. I do love the Copic markers. They do give you a nice base for what you're doing and as far as coloring. I would love to take a class and do all Copic markers. I admire people that can do it with the Copic markers. Okay, so we're just going to be coloring in her hair. And again, try not to go over the lines because it will bleed into your marker or smear. And you don't have to be precise. It's okay if you don't color right inside or right up to the edge because we are going to go over it with the pencils. That's a great thing about that. So we're just continuing to color in her hair. Most of the time I am never a loss for words as any of my friends can tell you, but a lot of times when I color, I kind of get lost in what I'm watching and don't have a whole lot to say. <laughs> so I apologize for the silence. So now that we have her hair filled in with the Copic marker, we're first going to go in with raw umber, number 180, and we're going to give her a few strokes. Now this is kind of a feathering type thing, I think is what most people would call it. Um, I just call it strokes, but you're just pulling away and you're pushing fairly, not really hard, but not really light because you want to get some definition in there for her strands and the shading. But remember, less is always more because you can add more later. And it will be darker on the left side because the sun is shining from the top right. It 
it would be darker on the top, just a little, depending on how she has her head tilted. And like I said, we're not going for realism. We're not grading. I'm, thank God nobody ever grades mine. My art teacher would be uh, from college would be very upset with me not being realistic as far as all the shading, but I just put it where I think it should go. As long as you're happy with the result, that's all that matters. So you can see her coming to life even more now by putting a, giving her hair some definition. So then I'm going to come in with light yellow ochre, which is number 183. And I'm just going to go right above where I just put in the uh, raw umber. And again, I'm just using the strokes. This color is very similar to the raw umber, but it's just a little bit lighter, you can see. Then I'm going to come back in again with the raw umber. Oh, excuse me, brown okra. And give her just a little bit more definition in her hair. Then I'm going to use a light cadmium yellow, number 108. And now she's really getting some gorgeous golden locks. Well, no locks, that's, those are curls. She's getting a sassy do, let's say that. <laughs> she is sassy Sally. And just continue to alternate those. Now I'm going to come in with the white. And you can see it change. This just gives her a little bit of highlights. Tones it down a little bit as well. Again, using the brown ochre. A little bit more definition, a little more shading. And I said in a recent post, don't ever compare your work to anyone else's. There's always going to be someone that's better than you. The most that you ever want to do is look at someone else's work that is better than yours and strive for that. Don't ever tell yourself you can't do something. And we're just going to keep alternating these colors till we get the look that we want. I love the cadmium. So we're going to finish her off by giving her a little bit more depth as far as the shadowing. And again, it's, it's not going to be perfect. So I'm going to zoom in here so I can show you how the white makes a difference in her hair. It lightens it. It gives her a little bit of definition. And it also tones down the color. Sally's looking pretty good. She has such a sweet face. And you can see now that I've zoomed in how there's little strokes. Very rarely do I ever color hair in a circular motion like I do the face. It's always with strokes because you have strands of hair on your head. So now we're going to move on and we're going to color her bow and her pants. After I add a little more definition there. And for her bow and for her shorts, I'm using R35, which is coral. I love this color. Sometimes I use lipstick red, which I believe is R29. But it's a little bit darker. This one is a little bit brighter to me. It was very sunny. I wanted bright colors that day. And again, be very careful when you go over the lines so that they don't smear. Just a cute little red short. So we can continue to fill this in 
and then we're going to color it with the pencils. Now first I'm going to start out, start out with what I want to shade with the darkest. Now I know it may sound weird, but I am using Payne's Gray number 181 to do the shading. Oh, and I did forget to mention that when you are using the Copic markers, um, it doesn't really matter what kind of paper you are using as far as the quality. You do want to let that Copic marker dry just a little bit before you go over top of it with the pencils. You want to let it soak in. You want to let it soak in and absorb into the paper before you go over it with the pencils. Now, any type of uh, cardstock is great for coloring these. The only thing that I like about the Bristol board is that I don't like it to bleed on the backside with the Copic markers, and the Copic markers will bleed to the backside of cardstock. But cardstock is great for coloring on as well. I just like the texture of this 300-pound um, uh, Bristol board a lot better. So again, we're thinking about the shading coming from the right. And I'm going to start to give her bow a little bit of detail, definition. And I'm going to add a little white where I think the sun may shine just a little bit. And like I say, it's all, for me, it's all guesswork. I just have fun when I color. Now I'm going to go in with Permanent Carmen number 126. And again, this is a Faber-Castell pencil as well. And I'm just going to blend that lightly. And you can go over the white a little bit if you like. I usually leave it by itself. I do blend it, but I don't go over it most of the time. So then I'm going to use the dark red number 225. And the reason I use the dark... 20, uh, dark red 225 on her bow is because her bow is further away from the sun and it might be a little bit darker. So now we're going to start adding a little more shading to the pants. And I'm using the Permanent Carmen here, number 126. And again, it's a circular motion. Now I'm used the thing about it is, is when you're coloring clothing or shoes or something like that, a lot of times you want to think of the texture of what you're coloring. And putting the lines in there sometimes, will, like the fabric, it gives it, you know, like the threads or the strands, however you want to say it. And I'm going to keep going in a little bit further down with the Payne's Gray and giving her definition. And then I'm going to start blending these together again with a permanent carmen. And you're again not pressing very hard and you're using a blunt tip. Red is my favorite color. Anybody who knows me knows it is and I use red a lot in my illustrations. So now since we're done with her pants and her bow, we're going to start coloring her shoes. Now when you're coloring her shoes you can use a darker Copic marker, but I like to start light and build up. So I'm using Copic marker N0, which is warm as natural gray. Let me turn it here. Actually, let me, let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see. Um, okay. Now we're going to start adding the definition of her shoes. And I'm using black number 199. And you can see how there's little circular strokes there. And here I'm pressing a little bit harder with the black because it they are dark shoes. But then I, I do a little bit lighter as well. You don't want it too shiny. And I only use uh, three colors, four colors for the uh, for the shoes. You can use two. You can use you can do it all black, depending on how hard you press and lightly. You could do it with just all black or the Payne's gray. But I'm just thinking about where the shadows would be, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm coming in with the warm gray, number 274, and I'm just going to blend this just a little bit to get those lines out. A 
And we're going to do that for both shoes. Leaving a little bit light area so that you can go over it. She would have a little bit lighter, shiny areas on her shoes. These are like little black patent leather shoes, if you remember them like I do when I was a kid. Wore them to church on Sundays and Easter. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'm going to come in with the Payne's Gray, and I'm going to blend a little bit more and add a little color. Payne's Gray is a little bit more of a charcoal color, and I really love it. I use it for a lot of shading. And we're just going to continue to add more, going in the crevices around her, where her socks are, or the edge of her shoe. And again, think about how the shoes look. I think everybody has seen shoes like these. So you know how they are. They're very shiny. They're smooth. Um, they just, I mean, you, you, they just have a certain feel to them. So try to feel what you are coloring, if that makes any sense to you at all. And keep alternating the colors to get the look that you want. I always want to say it's not rocket science, but that doesn't make sense at all. Or you, Let's put it this way. You shouldn't color like it's rocket science. It should, it should be easy. Don't overthink it. And I'm thinking it would be a little bit shinier there, so I'm leaving a little bit more white on that one shoe. And then again, I'm going to blend with the, with the cold gray, number 230, cold gray 5, number 234. And remember, this is all about how it looks to you. If you've watched my other videos, you've heard me say, pretend like no one else is going to see it, and you'll color it a lot differently. You're not looking for approval. And I'm going to use the cold gray number five, 234, on her soles. So now that we have our shoes done, we might as well go ahead and do her socks while we're here. So thinking about where the shading would be and the light source coming from the top, I'm going to use middle... Put I'm going to say middle halo blue. You you can see how it's spelled. It's P H T H A L O. I'm just going to call it middle halo blue. And that's number 152. And you can I have done it on some of my illustrations. I even give the socks a little bit of lines in there, you know, like tube socks kind of thing. But in this instance I did not. That'll be another tutorial perhaps. But we're just going to continue to color. And again, don't go too dark at first because you can always add more. And especially in a tight spot like that, you don't want to add too much because it's hard to get out with even an eraser. So then I'm going to go over it with sky blue number 146. And I'm going to blend that lightly. Not coming out too far. And then finally, I'm going to use light halo blue number 145. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit more blue. And you can see the socks starting to come to life. These socks do that sort of thing. <laughs> so now we're going to go ahead and color the ladybugs. Most of the time I do not color ladybugs. I used to with the Copic marker. But I'm using um, the Faber-Castell pencils in this instance. And I'm using dark red number 225. And that's going to be for the darkest areas on the ladybugs. So we're going to use the dark 225, dark red 225, to go ahead and color the darkest areas on the ladybugs. And then I'm going to come in with pale geranium light, which is number 121. It's almost kind of an orangey red. Ladybugs, I've seen them bright red. I've seen them more of an orange color. So it's whatever your preference is. And I'm just blending that lightly. Love me some ladybugs. Now we're going to go ahead and color her shirt. And I'm going to start with the middle halo blue. And that's number 152. I'm going to lightly add some color here where the shading would be. Or shadow, I should say. I don't know about you, but I'm constantly turning my paper upside down, sideways, to get into where I feel comfortable with coloring. 
I, I can't see coloring something looking at it straight on. A little bit of shadow under the ladybug because he's on the back of her shirt. I'm going to come under her arm and we're going to start adding a little shading there as well. Now I do go darker underneath there because it is pretty dark shiny, um, shading there. But still, you don't want to go overboard and push too hard. So then I'm going to come in with the light halo blue, number 145. And I'm just going to lightly blend that and extend the shading just a little bit. I love these blue colors. They're great for shirts. I've used tan on shirts before too, but most of the time I do them blue. And continue to color that till you get it the way you like, just alternate the colors. And you can add detail to your shirt too at the end. If you have little stripes or polka dots. I'm more of a plain Jane girl. I'm a t-shirt and blue jeans, flip-flops, or Converse sneakers. <laughs> I like to keep it simple. So then I'm going to come in with the white and I'm just going to blend those lines out just a little bit. Not too much. She's coming to life even more. You gotta love her. She's adorable. So after that, we're going to go ahead and color her book. And for the book binder or the binding, I'm using Copic marker number E07 and that is light mahogany. And then I'm going to use for the book part, or the cover, I'm going to use W1, which is warm gray. And again, you don't have to go right to the edge. We're going to color over most of it with the pencils anyway. And again, let it dry and absorb into your um, Bristol board or card stock, um, whatever you're using. And most of the time, I turn on one of my desk lamps that I'm using and let it dry that way. So now we're going to color the grass in. We're just going to put a little bit of, uh, I call it a background down or four color. And that's YG61, which is pale moss. I love this color too. I found this combination for the grass um, the, the best or, or my favorite, I should say. You can use whatever you have readily available or whatever works for you. So I'm going to go in for the light halo blue. And I'm just going to add a little bit of color into the sheets of the paper. Not too much, just a little bit. So now we're ready to start coloring her book. I'm using Walnut Brown number 177. I'm going to use that on the spine. And turn it so you can see. And just think about old books. That's what I was trying to think about when I was coloring this. Old books with like little cracks in them. I love the smell of books. I'm not much of a reader, but I do like the smell of books. Then I'm going to use Van Dyke Brown, which is number 176, to give a little bit of shading around her hand where she's holding the book. And I'm going to extend that down just a little bit because it would be shaded by her arm. And I'm going to do the binding as well. And we're just going to add a little detail. Not too much. Not a lot of shading there. And then I'm using brown ochre number 182 to go over and blend just a little. And again, these are light strokes. Add some more definition to the spine. Those are the sweet little cracks in the old books. I have several old books that I love. A couple are old because Bella has chewed on them, my dog. <laughs> so we're going to alternate the colors just until you get the look that you like. Don't ever think it. Less is more. And it's not, the, it's not permanent. You can always go back and add more color. I've looked at stuff that I've done before and I've totally re- totally add extra color all the time. So now we're going to go ahead and color the grass. And the first color that I'm using is Earth Green Yellowish, number 168. 
and I just do simple upstrokes for the grass, thinking about them being blades of grass. And you can add a little or a lot. You don't have to cover all of the Copic marker. In fact, you could you could even use this one color and just stop. It just depends on what you want to do. I prefer to use a couple of colors because grass is not all the same color, especially the weeds. So it's just up and down strokes. And then I use like little fan strokes to the side. And then secondly, I'm going to come in with my second color, Juniper Green, and that's number 165. And again, up and down strokes, maybe a little bit side to side. Just however you want to do it. I love grass because it's simple to do. And it doesn't have to be realistic. I mean, my goodness. Can you imagine coloring realistic grass? That would take forever. I don't have that kind of patience. And then finally, I'm going to come in with my pine green, number 267. And it's the darkest of the three. And I'm just giving some area, uh, some shading in there, or strokes. And that's pretty much it. I hope you'll check out my other tutorials. Make sure you subscribe to receive updates. And again, the image is called Ladybug Tales, and it's available in my shop, Sasha Cheryl Stamps. Thanks for watching, and happy coloring.